Hi, a while back we reported to you on this Forster coax press. Kind of went into depth about various features and so forth. Well, we've been living with it for a while, and I thought a follow-up would be appropriate. There were some questions raised about it in uh, comments on the previous video, and I'd like to address those and some things we've learned. So here we go. If you organize your workspace so that you've got your cases, bullets, etc., right where you need them, and you've also got a receptacle of some sort, in this case a little gray plastic bin, in just the right place, you can really make some time with this press because the shell holder, once the press is all the way down, the shell holder no longer traps the cartridge. It's just sitting there. So with a flick of your finger, you can take it out. Speeds things up, especially things like decapping and sizing, um, flaring, belling cases. Not so much for seeding bullets where you're handling powder and all, but for most operations, it makes things move pretty fast. This is the secret to the priming quality of the coax press. It's, it's the actual priming cup, uh, the, the little holder. And while I've got it in focus, I want to show you something here. If you will look, uh, wow, that's too big even. Find something small to point with here. My friendly dentist gave me this little tool. Look, look in the gap, in, in the gap right here between these uh, two turns of the spring, and you'll see a shoulder. See that coming through there? That, that's the shoulder of, of this cup. It has a, 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 a sleeve portion that goes around a central post, and it's sliding back and forth. And that shoulder, if we look carefully, maybe under the spring, you see, you see that shoulder coming through right there? And it's going to bottom out against the threaded part, that large part in my left hand, uh, and that's going to stop its motion. Okay, fine. But here's what's important. When that does go down like that, it goes five thousandths of an inch below the central punch. That outer rim is five thousandths below there, and it's stopped firmly against that post. So when, when you're seating the primer, this outer portion rests against the base of the, or, or the face of the, of the uh, cartridge, the base of the cartridge, and the central punch is pushing the primer inside, and it will push it five thousandths of an inch beyond the face of the case, and that's it. So the whole secret to the thing is this little gizmo right here and the way that it is very, very precisely machined. The spring doesn't do anything except make it come back. It has nothing to do with the accuracy of it, okay? It's just the precision machining of these two parts right here, back and forth. So that's why I say it doesn't rely upon your ability to feel this perfect seating depth. And so now you know the secret. Swapping out the primer punches is, is really very simple. It's just thread it in, take a finger on one side and a finger on the other side, and then you see how it just drops into the threaded, the dreaded threaded now, every time I did this before, I had no trouble, but then I wasn't on television, was it? And so you just turn that and down it goes. And it doesn't have to be put in very tight. You don't have to grab it with a wrench or anything. Works good. Okay, let's do a shell holder change and see how long it takes. Right now I've got the, the small jaws in there that'll hold tiny cartridges like this one and large cartridges like this 45 long Colt will not even go in there. So we'll start by remember the trick, put something on, under there to uh, get it up a little bit. Then you ready? Go. Let me 
go through our little procedure here, removing the jaws. By the way, I, I did buy the optional set of jaws uh, available for this. The standard jaws handle everything that I reload, which is a lot of different cartridges, and probably will handle what just about anybody would reload. But I also reload the 4570, and I also reload a Wildcat cartridge based on a 3030. And ne neither one of those will, will work. Uh, the um, it's just uh, the the rims are too thick. But those are the only two that I've run across while I'm talking and can't get the spring in there at the same time. Um, those are the only two that I've run across that, that, that won't work just fine. And uh, But even those now, it's 28 bucks. So if you figure you're gonna be loading any 19th century Buffalo cartridges and things with large rims, uh, probably should invest in that when you buy the uh, thing. There's a chart that tells you what all will be in there and chances are good unless you're doing 4570 or 3030 your cartridge won't be on there. But those work just fine by the way. Okay that's it. We raise it up you know let it kind of find its center and then tweak it one last little bit right there. I like my Swiss Army watch. My son got this for me about 20 years ago. I just got a new band for it, so kind of feels like it's brand new. How about that. Ah, yeah. Look. 45 long coat. Works great. One of the comments made in response to the original video was that the coax press is good for pistol cartridges, but wouldn't be good for rifle cartridges. I just don't understand that, <laughs> to be honest, I really don't. And one of the reasons is when I first saw this press in operation, it was in a video uh, shot at the Army Marksmanship School at uh, Fort Benning, Georgia, and the armorers were loading up match ammo for the Army snipers, the shooting team, what have you. And uh, of course they were loading 308s and probably 300 win mag, um, and they were using the Forrester coax, and that's what caught my eye in the first place. Uh, I load 223 with it all the time, uh, seven millimeter mag. And that's a pretty good size case, and of course 4570. Now we'll talk about that in a minute. It required getting a sec a second set of jaws in order to do that something I will readily admit that the standard jaws handle most cartridges but not all and um, you should look at their list. There is a published list on the uh, Forrester website and if your cartridge requires the special jaws bite the bullet pay 28 bucks more and get them. It was also suggested that these were impossible to get uh, maybe from Forrester, but not from one of the vendors. I don't recall. It was Midway, Mid-South, Sinclair, somebody like that. I, I think Mid-South, who I bought it from. And um, they had it in stock. So <laughs> what can I say about that? That's just the way it is. It's not so much the diameter of the 4570 case shown here compared to a 45 ACP. Uh, pistol cartridge. It's the thickness of the case that causes the problem with the standard shell holder system in the uh, coax press. You can see it's much thicker than a typical modern cartridge. If you can call a what a 1903 cartridge is uh, I think it was designed about that time. Uh, but that's that's the deal. Well if you get these accessory uh, large jaws when you buy your press if you know you're going to be doing these no problem it uh, fits under there just just fine 45 70 30 30 you know they're a little, they're not they don't come out as easily I'll admit that as as the uh, as the others which you can just flick out with your finger but no not bad 
As far as sizing and loading of, of 4570, it's a pretty long cartridge. It's um, it's not a problem, not not at all. Uh, I, in fact, I want to show you. I have the uh, the little short ball handle on here that you would normally think you would use with with a pistol cartridge. I think you can see it out there, and uh, it just goes right down, no problem whatsoever. Got this. I love just flipping these things in and out because it, it, it you'd be surprised how often you do that when you're setting up dies and making fine tuning adjustments. You might want to go back and resize the things so you can find out. For example, the second step is where you do the uh, neck expansion and then you want to bell the thing just enough so that a bullet will start down in there very well well that sometimes takes a bit of fiddling you normally can get it right but if you mess up and you overdo it well then it's just a simple matter of whipping out that die putting in this one even though I wiped off the lube there's still a little bit left in there and now we're back to the original size and of course you know the, the bullet won't even begin to go in there so pop your die in there Put your case in here, come back, and now you can reflare it. And like I said, it's a little tricky to get out, and you're you're good to go. Waka 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 waka. Now you may be thinking, well, that's all well and good, but what about bullet seating? Is there going to be enough room in there? Yes, there is. This is the tallest combination of bullet in case that I have. Uh, it's a 7 millimeter Magnum and it's a 168 grain uh, Sierra Match King and, and that's a long bullet and so there it is and that's what we've got to fit inside the press. So what do you think? You think it's going to go? Well we, in, in fact I'm just still using those large jaws that I was using earlier and if you drop that bullet into that thing, yep, it will go right up in there. I do not have any powder. I don't have it set up, but obviously it will, it will go in there without any problem at all. I will attempt to show you now how the uh, priming jaws are adjusted. The key to it is this little tool right here, which I hope you can see that comes with the press and it just simply slips underneath and then comes up through and you use either the large or the small uh, priming uh, post. In this case I'm going to set this up for a, 45, uh, a 40 which it's not now, 40 Smith & Wesson. So what you do is you got three three little jaws here and you want to loosen those Let's see if I can get my hands out of the way and do this left-handed right okay and the, the these little tabs move freely take your cartridge case and place it right on top of that post which fits the primer pocket and then you just simply slide the three See if I can do this and not block your vision. Slide the three um, jaws into place and use your left hand, of course, so that it makes it twice as difficult. And then you tighten it in there and that's it. And so now that's adjusted perfectly for that case. I know if I move it too much, you won't see it. Hopefully you'll see it right there. But that's how you do it. One of the criticisms of the Forster Coax Press is its strongest feature, in my opinion, and that is the floating, the floating die system. And this is, as we talked about earlier, where the dies can float and align themselves to the cartridge case. The criticism is that it's held in place by four threads of aluminum. 
Well, and if you're using an aluminum die lock ring, it, that's true. And you may be concerned about that. I'm not, and I'll tell you why. But I really prefer the steel cases, or I'm, I'm sorry, the steel die lock rings because they slide more easily. Um, they don't get scratched and nicked the way the aluminum rings do. Forster actually provides, this is not a Forster, but Forster provides aluminum rings to use with it. Um, I prefer the Hornady. Um, they're a little less expensive. They're very well made. They just have a great feel. I've got them here. and Here's one. It's on a Redding die, and I love Redding dies too. So that's, there you go. Why am I not concerned about the 30, or about the uh, aluminum? Um, depending on what kind of aluminum it's made from, it's probably made from 6061 aluminum. This would be the most common used for tooling parts like nuts and bolts and so forth, and this is just a big round nut. The, the shear strength is 30,000 psi. I'm not going to go into the math, but I did the calculations and um, I'll post it up here somewhere so you can see it. I'm not kidding you about this. And figuring an absolute worst case of minimum female thread and minimum male thread, so everything is just as bad as it can be, um, you, you still wind up with absolutely nothing less than around 10,000 pounds of, of shear strength. And, and that is to say it would resist a 10,000 pound uh, force and not shear or strip the threads um, based on a 30,000 PSI. Um, and figuring this thing is actually about 0.315, thereabouts uh, thick, and I was actually using 0.3 inches for that. I was using minimum threads, but actually smaller than actual size here, <clears throat> using less than the, the actual number came out to be. The actual number came out to be uh, something in the neighborhood of uh, 18,000 pounds, or 17 thereabouts. But let's say 10. How much force do you think you're exerting with this press? It's, it's several hundred pounds, that's it. It's probably less than a thousand pounds. At very most, it might be a thousand. So your factor of safety is probably at least 10 with a, an aluminum ring. Anyway, I, you know, push my buttons and I get a little bit off track here on that. Sorry about that. but. That's just the way it is. It's a good press. There's really nothing wrong with it. It's, it's really very, very nice. It's expensive. That's the only thing wrong with it. But it sure does work good. Hey, thank you for watching this.